I kind of wish you stopped with Adventure 1, because that means the only Crush 40 song you like is the one they didn't make in the 2000s. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been kind of funny if that was the case, but either, either way. <laughs> Hello everyone and welcome to the Alum Colors Podcast, the podcast that YouTube respects but doesn't have to like. I'm your host, the fox who's wildly inconsistent, the art Sosacha, and today I'm in and today I'm my guest is the guy who's stuck in cyberspace, Obsidian. Hi. Hi. Yeah, nice. Hi. Uh, uh, it's nice to be here. <laughs> I, I fucked up that intro, and that's that's how you know unprof- how unprofessional I am. <laughs> now that is the most fucking things up is the most professional way you can go about things. <laughs> oh man. Um, okay, so yeah. today we are going to be talking about Sonic Frontiers, um, a game that personally I have played uh, like last month and absolutely loved, um, and. I already on today because ultimately, uh, from I, I don't really. This is a question I did want to ask ultimately before we get into things like um, well, it's like what is your history with uh, Sonic? Um, to be blunt with it, very extensive. Uh, I've been a Sonic fan for most of my life. I want to say, mm. uh, basically since like 2000, 2004, 2005, when I first because my first game was. Sonic Heroes on I was the weirdo I was that one weirdo who played it on the Xbox instead of the other two ah. <laughs> and then then I've just kind of honestly played most of the games as they came out like on the Wii on the DS on the 360 with generations and that um mm-hmm. lost like Lost World um, Mania Forces it's a series that I've been somewhat begrudgingly following for most of my life and it's one that I've got uh, a bit of a love hate relationship with, but it's leaning more towards the love, like 65 35. Yeah, uh, honestly, yeah. I have to agree because, like, um, my background with uh, Sonic Frontiers is I. Okay, so I grew up, uh, my dad had this, like, Windows 95 computer, and I played Sonic CD a lot on there. Um, but other than that, mm-hmm. one of my biggest games was Sonic R. I played it and like to this day I still have a very slowed down revert version of Can You Feel the Sunshine playing in my head because our computer was shit. <laughs> and <laughs> fair enough. <laughs> yeah. And after that it was a few Sonic comics, none of the Archie stuff, it was Sonic X. Um or I, right. gu- I guess technically, like, it was whatever I picked I up at Barnes & Noble, because I had, like, there were some Sock X comics, but then there was, like, stuff around Shadow when he was a king. Um, and it, it was just a Mars. That, that, that may have been Archie, com- Archie that comic stuff, because that stuff got freaking weird. Yeah, like, uh, Maybe. I, I don't know, like, I, I was, like, I remember, I, I was in, like, it was before I was in kindergarten, because I was in preschool, and I had a comic of Sonic and Sally kissing and asking about having kids. So... Okay, yeah, that's that's definitely Archie stuff, especially like early two thousands era Arch- Archie stuff was really weird like that. Yeah, I don't know who that was made by, but uh, I'm just gonna go out of limb here and say Ken Penders did that, but I don't know. That was Ken. It was more than likely Ken Penders, yeah, because okay. he was the head writer up until two thousand six. I want to say. Okay. Yeah. Some, something like that. Yeah, two thousand six was when I was was when I went to kindergarten, so most likely. But um, other than that. Uh, my, one of my biggest, uh, introductions to the Sonic outside of R and CD was I had a Game Boy game my dad got me for her birthday. I got Sonic Adventure DX, not the, uh, not the Dreamcast or, not the Dreamcast version, the, the, just the PC version. And it, yeah. it had its problems, but ultimately, like, I still loved it. But then my mom had to go and fucking break the disc for whatever reason. I don't know. Like, I, I, I like how you say that. Like it was actually, like it was, like it was done maliciously. Like she wanted to just get rid of it for some reason. I don't know. Whatever. Uh, other than that, I uh, my connections to Sonic have been. I played Sonic 06 as a demo in uh, at Target or whatever. And honestly, that was by far the best version of Sonic 06 I've played because whatever reason, the official version absolutely sucked balls. The demo was actually kind of legit, though. Yeah, like, it's enough, I think it says something about how much 
well, how many too many, how many too many things I know about this series that I can give an actual reason as to why that demo was better. <laughs> but basically, like, I, I, I can say if you want or or not. If like we can or we can move on, but either way, uh, it's I don't know. We can we, we can talk about I like know. uh, so, me, I don't know. Maybe in another time we can talk about Sonic in general, but. Uh... Other than that, just, yeah, uh, fine. yeah, no, it's fine, it's fine, like, again, I don't really have a, like, a full-on formula, it's just kind of bullet points, then we, we go into whatever. Other than that, pretty yeah. much to <laughs> speedrun Sonic Heroes, uh, Sonic Unleashed, uh, I skipped a number of Sonic games, aside from, like, Sonic Rivals and Zero, and Riders, Zero Gravity, outside of that, um, okay. skipped a lot of things, and I haven't really been paying much attention to Sonic until Frontiers. So, yeah, there it is. Yep, so you've got the two balance in that. You've got the one who knows too much and the one who knows... I say too little, but that's honestly the preferable situation, probably. <laughs> I, yeah, I... <laughs> um, so, uh, yeah. And anyway. uh, I usually start off with this question, but we kind of got sidetracked with time. But I, I did want to ask a question now. Just how you been doing? Eh, can't, com can't complain too much. Um, yeah. Just... Going to, like going through life. Uh, I'm normally a quiet person who keeps to himself anyway, but you know, uh, just making more of an effort to try and go out in that, eat better, trying to lose a bit of weight. You know. Yeah. Okay. Like the egg, like Eggman, could, like <laughs> Eggman, if you will. <laughs> egg. I chose this avatar for a reason because this is peak yeah. human physical form. <laughs> uh, to those who uh, are watching this podcast, um, I wanted to try something different, so I, I had my friends install a PNG Tuber software, and we just decided to do this. If things had gone wrong, I would have just swapped back over to uh, just my usual uh, formula. But uh, things are going pretty fine, so I think uh, we can work with it. Either way, it would have been Eggman. Just difference between being Eggman or Jim Carrey. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> so what? So. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, Sonic. Yeah, Sonic. Uh oh, Doom said that uh, she asked if I kicked her out. Uh. <laughs> uh. <laughs> I mean, that's not incorrect, but <laughs> anyone who's listening to this. Uh, the we had a few other people who were meant to be on with this, but uh, obviously things happen in that. It's a podcast, so things always go wrong, at least not that much. So, yeah, yeah. basically just we were under the assumption that one of them wouldn't be on because of network issues, but seems like she might be. And that would be radical. Uh, anyway, um, I don't know. We, we we're, Since I guess we're technically on the clock or whatever i guess we can just like kind of get started more or less um in, in regards to me personally uh i'm i'm still in the middle of job hunting and everything so i uh it, it's just been here or there yeah that's fair enough i'm i'm employed right now hope trying to work out some stuff to work, work out some stuff behind the scenes because it's kind of a weird situation but eh, hopefully hopefully it all figures itself out and if not it's I can find a back. I'll have a backup plan, yeah. just to keep it as vague as possible. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, yeah. I guess we can uh, just get started. So, Sonic Frontiers. Um, this was a game that has been. This was a game that ultimately has been uh, like just. I guess in a circle for a lot of people. I think a lot. Of, I think um, personally for me, I can't speak for everyone. Personally, I, I when I heard about it. It very much was something where it was just like, I, you know, I, it kind of sounded interesting, but at the same time, it's like considering Sonic's uh, track record with games, I wasn't really too excited. And then the game finally came out. I heard so many people unanimously agree it's a 7 out of 10, and I'm just like, oh, maybe I'll give it a shot. And then I gave it a shot, and I absolutely loved it. It's 7 point. Now it's a 7.5. <laughs> Yeah, okay, yeah. Doom says, uh, to... yeah, Doom says, no, she's still boned, so, um, yeah, I guess it's just gonna be one of us. Oh, well, uh... That's fine. Yeah, I guess, uh, should I give my history with Frontiers then, or... Yeah, um, okay, so, like, going into Frontiers, like, what did, what did you, uh, what did you think going in? Well, uh, I think it's also, I think it's kind of important to list that 
me being more active in following Sonic than you, than uh, you were, uh, kind of also did impact how I was feeling about Frontiers, because I don't know if you played Force. Well, obviously you didn't play Forces, but I don't know if you heard anything about it, because most I... people agree it was like, a v it was very disappointing for most people. That's like the general consensus around Forces when it released, and it's not really changed much since then. The only thing I know about Forces is that, like, well, for one, TFS played it and had, like, some very choppy frame rates. Other than that, uh, for some reason, well, I guess it's because Sega owns, uh, Sega owns this company, but for, uh, I, they gave, like, Sonic Forces a Persona 5 Joker DLC. Yeah, the uh, Sega owns Atlas, so yeah, that's I, why that I, that I was end. like, wait, I, I don't know why, but then I remember playing Persona Five. I remember at the end, all oh, right, Sega owns Atlas. Yeah, like there's a there was a bunch of those costumes because I think there was one for Jet Set Radio, one for Super Monkey Ball, one for Knights. I want to say there's like other Sega series. In okay, that Knights seems, makes you know, Knights makes a lot of sense considering that both uh, like considering that it's not just Sega, but also Sonic has history with Knights. Yeah, it was made the first. The Knights games were made by the same, were the same guys who make the Sonic games. Yeah, like it's the same dev team. So, and yeah, Jet Set Jet Set Radio is just a classic one, and Super Monkey yeah. Balls like, decently active for a Sega series. Uh, but yeah, F Frontiers was a disappointing game, and it was also one that was kind of like building off of a this kind of general feeling of tiredness a lot of Sonic fans had with like how the games. Not just approach like uh Wait, you mean the forces game itself, or also like it's uh, forces, sorry. Forces, yeah. I was like uh, Frontier yeah. is disappointing. I'm like, okay, well I I Well I, we'll get to that. I, I was about we to say, well, later. I mean not uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, basically like uh I'll because like ever since like Sonic Colors came out back in 2010, uh the games have had a much more jokey kind of Saturday morning cartoonish writing feel, mm -hmm. but it was kind of like inconsistently like that. And it was something that was a lot of Sonic fans were feeling very, were starting to feel very turned off and getting kind of sick of because it was this, it was this feeling of not really taking the game, not really taking you know what's happening in it seriously, being very overly jokey and annoying, and the plot just being like very shallow in that. Also, it didn't help that Forces wasn't very good as a game because it's like all the levels were very short, they were very basic. It felt like a game that was made in like a year and a half, which I think it actually was. So that was kind of. Yeah, that was kind of like the reception for, that people had when Frontiers was being announced. So at best, I think a lot of people were kind of like cautiously optimistic at best, which is where I was. Yeah. And then the actual trailers, then like the first reveals for it came out. And I know you weren't, and you never saw like any of the reveal stuff before. I know like you said, you only really uh, got it after it came out and you heard like the, what other people were saying about it. Yeah. But did you see like any pre-release stuff before then? Um, the only thing I saw in regards to before it came out was the, um, the iconic trailer song that, um, you didn't hear in the game until, like, at the end credits if you played hard mode, I believe is what you said. Uh, is it, was it that song, was it that song Vandalize? It was, um... If you remember, that would you, the one that wasn't by Nate Wants to Battle. Yeah, I think so, it was... Okay, okay, um... Ah, like, if it's the Vandalize you're thinking of, then that's the ending theme on normal mode, not hard mode, so... Yeah. Uh, okay, if that's the only thing you saw, then you didn't none, you didn't know this, but... Um, the, orig the original reveals for this, when it was done around when E3 would have happened, were... Well, to be blunt about it, fucking terrible. <laughs> it was... This... It was... Uh, this completely contextless footage of Sonic walking around on the first island in that. There was no HUD elements, there was no exclamation of like the story or the gameplay. It was just someone playing the game and not doing it very well, like slowly walking about, making it look awkward. And it was like oh the my worst God. possible oh, impression they could oh, have done. I fucking remember stuff like that showing up. Like they were like I remember there were like shots of like people in like like there was these clips coming around on uh on, on Twitter of people in like uh cyberspace level and they was just like I and they were just bad mouthing the game where it's just like making it look like a lot worse than it actually was. And it's like It was like I think this was actually before that, funnily enough, but uh because this was like the initial gameplay reveal before like any demos were available because mm. like the gameplay demos were when a lot of the cyberspace um, 
mud flinging, for lack of a better term, happened. Yeah. And okay, funnily enough, uh, do you know anything about Sonic's history with IGN, like the review site? Um, not really. Okay, well, you know how IGN's a bit of a meme because they tend to give out like lower or higher review scores than people would like. Yeah, like, like, people, they, like they, they gave. Hate them. They, I think they gave like Persona Five a ten out of ten, and a game like Gris like a three point five out of ten, saying it was okay. <laughs> yeah. Well, they've actually. Well, Sonic fans have always had a bit of beef when it comes to IGN because it seems like they kind of have it out for him sometimes. Uh, because they gave Sonic Unleashed a score of, I think, 3.5 or 4.5 out of 10, and they opened the review if it was like, I think the exact line was, let's be clear, Sonic Unleashed sucks. <laughs> that was like, very blunt about it. And, and there's even like, did you see like this one clip going about in like 2017 of this guy going, uh, Sonic was never good? Like that entire meme, did you ever see that? Um... I or, or like see anyone post that quote in that just like anywhere I, on the internet back in like 2017 ish. I might have. Ah, uh, because that was from IGN as that was from IGN as well from like uh, basically when Sonic Mania was coming out I think and yeah like that got a lot of Sonic fans blood boiling because the Sonic fan base tends to get pissed off very easily. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but funnily and but I'm only mention okay mentioning this just because context and also. Because, funnily enough, they were actually the ones that came to, like, calm down the fires from that initial reveal, because they actually gave, like, a recount of their hands-on pre like their hands -on preview with the game, yeah. which was a lot more positive and kind of explained what the gameplay and, like, the loop was, what the gameplay loop was. Mm -hmm. Which, yeah, basically. I was going somewhere with this. <laughs> um... <laughs> Okay, basically, yeah, like, in the lead-up to it, I saw that stuff, and then when the IGN previews came out, and, like, the initial gameplay previews came out, I saw, like, okay, they're mostly positive in that. There's some stuff that's a bit suspicious here, like, oh, the cyberspace levels are reusing exact level designs, ooh. The gameplay, the gameplay loop, I wonder if it'll actually be interesting, stuff like that, but up to release, I was cautiously optimistic, kind of leaning lean more towards the optimism than the caution as it went, but it was only, like, I was thinking like, okay, this is going to be a game that could be very good, very bad, or very 7 out of 10. And I'm pretty happy that when I played it, I realized, yeah, it's, it's the latter. Yeah, it's the latter. It's a very 7 out of 10 game. It but very much is. It's, it's, it's like, just... I like, I'll, yeah, it's... It, no, you go. I'll let you go. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's, a very seven out, it's a very 7 out of 10 game, but at least, like, the foundation it lays and, like, the... And, like, the Stuff that it tries in that gameplay-wise is something that makes me feel very, I don't know, relieved saying that, or like very, or like not bothered saying that, because I think about me with games is I much prefer when a game tries something and fails, but, you know, it's a failure that's born out of ambition, or like, you know, they didn't get it right, but you can see the ambition, you can see the effort that was there, versus something that's mediocre or milk toast, but it's like, okay, you, either you didn't have enough time to do it, so you put in the bare minimum, or it seems like you just put this together on autopilot, which is how a lot of people felt about Forces, just to bring that back again. But Frontiers is a game that's 7 out of 10, but it's a 7 out of 10 that you can tell they really, like, they actually really did give an effort, on, a solid effort on. Yeah. You know, gameplay-wise, trying, trying out all these new ideas to try and, like, lay a groundwork for the series going forward. You know, yeah. I think it's, like, like, I'm always going to appreciate that, even if the attempt is very flawed when it actually releases, which, you know, it is, but good on you. You made a, you made something that I can appreciate. <laughs> yeah. Personally, for me, on the 7 out of 10, like, um, it, I know this isn't related to Sonic, but I, I want to bring this up as, like, a comparison. Pokemon. Mm -hmm. Now, I have been a fan of both series since I was a child, and, um, both series... I have, as time went on, I have kind of fallen out of somewhat of an interest until two games in particular in each series. That for this, of course, is Sonic Frontiers. For Pokemon, it's Legends Arceus. Now, I tried out Legends Arceus. Mm -hmm. The more I played it, the more disinterested I got. The more bored, the more disinterested I got. It was fun at first, and then I was just like, okay. I it just. My, my just enjoyment just kind of started to die down now. It's just like, you know, okay, I get what they're doing, 
but it's just like I don't really feel like I, I don't really feel uh, the passion or the drive to really continue doing this. I play Sonic Frontiers. The more I played it, the more I was like, I want to keep going. I want to keep going. I want to keep playing this. This is fun as hell. So I really feel like, like, because I've been, you know, my interest for both series has been dying, but I mean, whatever they were doing in Sonic Frontiers, it worked. It, to a degree. Yeah. It To a degree, because there are some yeah. flaws in this game. There's ultimately some flaws in this game, but I will say, like, Definitely considering what we got over the years, I, I do think a game that they knew what they were doing, but there were some flaws, is a solid, like, a good game. Yeah, or even a game, like, where they didn't necessarily know what they were doing, but they were, like, they had, an, they had a vision and they wanted to try and achieve it the best they could in whatever the development conditions were for this, because, like, you can, like, you can tell just by, like, looking at it and playing it that, you know, some stuff, some stuff happened behind the scenes and isn't, like, the exact game that the team would have wanted to make if they had like the exact amount of time and budget that they and resources that they would have liked. I, I probably would like, there's definitely some there's def I probably would say like give corners. it another year in the oven and it probably would have been a lot more than uh, we got. Yeah, which funnily enough which funnily enough, the game was actually pushed back a year from when it was meant when it was initially meant to release. Oh, so wow. Which granted that was also there was also the fact of, you know, COVID nineteen and that which yeah like no doubt impacted it but yeah but yeah. i admit like but even with that and like they're being cut corners and that it's making the best of a bad situation and yeah like they made the best of it and made a good game yeah uh, shocker for, shocker for this series but yeah. still speaking of um go down the list i know we talked about this prior but go down the list from best to worst Favorite islands. Oh, the we're getting to the islands now. All right. Um, it's generally the, like a big part. Of, it's generally a big part of the game. <laughs> well, it's, it's the entire thing you're playing on. So yeah. <laughs> I guess I say from cyberspace, but still. Yeah. Um, best to best to worst for me. Best is Aries Island, the, des the desert one. Really like exploring it. Uh, like like the layout of, but like how like how much, like how fast you can go and like just the different. Uh, set pieces and architecture in it. Like, very fun island to explore. Uh, second would be Oranos Island, the the last one. Mm -hmm. uh, basically, it's just more of Kronos Island, but uh, it's got a big temple in the middle. I like the like the layout of it. It's just it's a fun island to go around in. Third would be Kronos Island, the first one. Fourth would be Chaos Island, kind of just by technicality. It's like my, it's the it's the worst. It's my least favorite one to actually explore, but. Uh, the volcanic, like the volcanic atmosphere, is nice of it, and is nice looking, and you know, it's got good music in that. Yeah. And the last one is Rhea Island, but that's only just technically because, well, it's just the top bit of Kronos Island. It's literally just a bunch of platform and challenges. And I, I was, I thought you were about to say, well, yeah, it's platform. I thought you were about to say it's mainly just story focused. Yeah, like that's that as well. It's basically just like going after a bunch of towers. It's like barely, like it's basically more just a plop, like a plop. Like an interlude than an actual full island yeah uh personally like I'm, I'm pretty much in agreement personally for me though um like i do in terms of like on that list i would have to switch the uh the other two around but ultimately yeah but i mean like on my list oranos island simply because like well Arius is definitely a lot more fun and, and was a lot more of a time sink for me personally i liked the challenge of like a lot of the enemies and a lot of the uh just the guardians and so on and so forth like it, it really feel it felt like the game was on in terms of like the enemies that you go in the open world it really feel like they were going all out with like hey how do we make this more challenging and it really i i think they really hit it home with that other than that Ares island definitely okay. Ares island definitely was again time sync hell of a lot of fun and i really enjoyed it i really enjoyed the topography of the desert i enjoyed just the different i i enjoyed the like the little platforming and whatnot and honestly the uh it, you know compared to compared to chronos island's big puzzle the Ares island's uh claw machine game was actually a, uh, a lot more easier <laughs> yeah that's well we can get we can get we can get into that after the the, yeah. the rest of your ride yeah kinda, I guess. yeah 
Chronos, uh, Chronos Island, I definitely would have to say uh, number three. Like, it's um, it, it's not as like enjoyable as Aries or Uranos, but I mean, it's a good starting point. Like, it's a good starting point for like just yeah. introducing you to everything. Um, other than that, I would personally, I just just because of how much this pissed me off. I would have to say Rhea Island is a technicality above Chaos Island, just because, yeah, I know it's like very, I, and that's very much like the story is a bias for me, but Chaos Island has some of the worst fucking like levels and platforming I've ever played, and it's just like visually, I like the idea of like, you know, a volcanic island and everything. I like it. Um, in practice, I was like, okay. I, I was just, it was like the island I felt the most pissed off at. Yeah, that is, that does, that is pretty much the consensus when it comes to it. Like, people tend to uh, have different opinions on what the best one is. Everyone agrees that Chaos is the, like, the worst of the main islands. Yeah. The but... only reason I put it above Rhea is just by technicality. Yeah, I understand that. My, my own dumb technicality, basically. <laughs> yeah, I, I, again, I understand that. <laughs> um... But yeah, yep. uh, since you brought yeah, it up like... earlier, let's talk about uh, cyberspace. Cyberspace. Um, yeah, it's interest. It's interesting, not like kind of conception. It's interesting for a few different reasons. Like conceptually, it's a way for them to kind of kind of have their cake and eat it too, or like mm -hmm. have something for like older Sonic fans. Because I think I said this before, but I think we kind of said this before, like when we were talking about talking about it privately but um or casually whatever you want to call it mm -hmm. most of the stages in that are level designs taken from uh, earlier sonic games you know yeah. like taken because i think i, I it's very, like, like i could definitely see that it was very much like it's like e even if i haven't played a lot of sonic games there was like stuff i definitely saw was like callbacks to previous sonic games like it was very obvious yeah yeah like a lot of them are and most, like, there are some original level designs in there, but most of them are just, like, taken, se sections taken from, like, different stages from, I think it's Unleashed, Generations, and Adventure 2. Hmm. Like, the Adventure 2 ones, because if you're looking, and if you're looking for them, you can see them, but I think since you've not played man as many of them, it's less of an issue for you. Unless it's just that level is frustrating in general. You know, outside of it being from a different game. Uh, the I think like the one major level from Ka the one major cyberspace level from Chaos Island, just the uh, enjoy this world level. I think it's by far the most aggravating. Was that the one with the rotating with like the, all the rotating platforms? Oh no, that wasn't the one with rotating. That there's is that there's is... not I, that one. I remember you getting pissed off at. Yeah, I remember that one. But um, there was a clip on my channel where it's like just called "Are We Done?" Where it's just like I. It was the one where I was just trying to rely on the hitboxes of like particular objects, like the you get into the switches and you pr and it's a quick time event where you press Y or B. Um, it's the one with like levitating platforms that are like it, it's the one that basically if you're trying to speed run it, I think I know it, it's it, I, well I know this is for a number of violence, but if you're trying to fucking speed run it, you slip and fall. Yeah, I think that was well that level. I think that level was taken from one of like this uh, sky sanctuary stages and generations yeah. then if it's like the rotating or the floating platforms but yeah like i, uh, I yeah it's kind of i played Sorry. like um i played the game no it's fine um i played the game uh <laughs> i played the game twice i played the game twice because i'm trying to do um like this cool video where it's like i replaced the sonic frontiers music with other music um and the, when it comes to the boss fights um, and I played through the so I played through the game twice, and I went through uh, a few different levels. Uh, the level that you're talking about with the rotating platforms, I went through that. Second time around, I figured out how to speed run that shit. This second time around with Fair the enough. level on Chaos Island, I it just I remembered how it just made me remember just how pissed off I got because it was just like nothing was working out the way I thought it would be. Yeah. You know, fair enough. I suppose it does make sense. The island based, the island named after K that's named Chaos, would be the one that causes the most chaotic emotions out of you. I suppose. Yeah. <laughs> also, uh, um, I, I I know we're I know this is a little off track, but it also fuck that skydiving mission on Chaos Island. Just 
Fuck that. Oh, that one. <laughs> God, I hate, like, it would, it, it's bad enough they have to add in, like, all these fucking springs and whatnot, but fuck that, like, last part where it's just like, hey, let's do a loop de loop and then have you skydive into rings, like, mm. just, you're putting me on the clock. Yeah, Stop I, with the light works, I didn't hate. get me to the ground. <laughs> I didn't hate I didn't hate that section, but I, I think I beat it on like my second try, but yeah, that was kind of a dick move. Like I should at least lock the timer to like one second, like at minimum one second if you get to it like at the end. Yeah, like some games will some or, games will do know, this I'm, where it's I like if there's me. a if there's a like just a cut between animations between gameplay and whatnot, there are some games that will just pause the timer and just like let yeah. it play out. Like I would hundred percent understand yeah. that. But no, it's just yeah, no. Hell, you want like yeah. Yeah, like, hell, you want, like, another Sega game as an example? Uh, I was recently playing through and beat Lost and beat Lost Judgment, and one of the things that that game has are these, like, bonus levels you can do, and one is one of these chasing missions where you need to basically come, uh, catch this, like, catch a target in a time limit. And the thing is, by the end of it, if they're too far away, then they, like, stop running so you can catch them. And when that happens, the timer stops, regardless of, like, how far away you are, because, you know, by then you've already won, it's just the game deciding to, deciding to let you finish. Oh. Like, it, it doesn't screw you over if you're, like, too far away to catch them, even if, the, like, you know, you've met the rest of the requirements to catch them. I'm not doing, I'm not doing a good job explaining that, but <laughs> Lost, Lost Judgment does, does, Lost Judgment does skydiving better than Sonic Frontiers. That's the, Okay, I think that's, that's, that's what you're trying to play. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, so, along with that, uh, I think we should more or less, like, what is, uh, just your thoughts on the story? What are your thoughts on the story? I think it's good. I think it's good. Um, I don't think it's like a mass... I don't think it's like, uh, or oh, best thing is like the best story ever told. Even in, like, Sonic and that, like, there's mm -hmm. better stories, or, like, stories that are more resonant with me that I can think of, but compared to, like, a, it is definitely a step more towards, more towards, like, the stories that they had in, like, the adventure, like, Adventure 1, 2, and even games like Sonic 06, then it's a bigger step. It's a step towards those type of stories instead of uh, what we've been getting for like since Sonic Colors. Since, as I said, they were a lot more, like a lot simpler, a lot more Saturday morning cartoonish, which was kind of the vibe they were going for with those games. Uh, yeah, like basically, I'm I enjoyed like I enjoyed it. I enjoyed like the character stuff that happened between like Sonic and each of his friends. I liked learning more about the Ancients and like uh, Sage's character arc. Uh, yeah, and like, I wish yeah. uh, it was good. It was all right. Needed more. Needed more Eggman and Sage interactions, though, because there was very few. There was like in the actual game. Yeah. Like, we had obviously had like the memos that he get from like Big's fishing mini game, which we'll talk about the great. We'll talk about uh, the, the Cyber Walker himself, like the Cyber Runner himself later on. Yeah. <laughs> no, the Edge Runner. That's it. Edge Ed, Runner. Big the Cat is an Edge Runner. That's my head cannon. <laughs> but. <laughs> <laughs> or whatever, or whatever Lucy's. Uh, or whatever oh Lucy's, my God! I'm just, uh, I'm just picture, I'm just picturing like just fucking in cyberspace, like fucking like Big the Cat. His whole cyber cycle, his whole cyber cycle episode is just him like just going like, "Hey, Froggy, it's just where are you?" <laughs> just he, he, that it's whole like... fishing event and whatnot. The whole fishing side game is just his cyber cycle episode. Yeah, it's like the it's like the pyro it's like the meet the pyro video where he's all peaceful and uh while he's just destroying everything around him, he's just like swinging and flaming off pushing them around like in heroes. Oh yeah. Oh god, I want that to be my head cannon now. That's my head cannon. Uh, wake the fuck up, samurai. It's time to go fishing. <laughs> oh my god. Um, personally uh. though personally when it comes to this story, um it actually, I don't know, I, I really feel like, um, it, it, in some ways, I do feel like they were trying to, uh, like, course correct with a lot of, uh, a lot of the criticism a lot of the fights have been getting, especially with recent Sonic games, because there's a lot of, uh, it, it, there's, a, I, I think there's a lot more of attention to detail when it comes to the reception, like how, uh, in the grand scheme of things, it does feel like, when it comes to the Sonic games, the characters will just kind of reset. Like, they have to, like, they just, either they're too one-dimensional or can't have development. And here, I really feel like them paying attention to, like, previous games, paying attention to previous events, and bringing that up 
towards character development, I really enjoy. Like, I liked, I like, I, I really liked, like, for as much shit as I give Chaos Island, I really liked Tails' moments. Like, him thinking, uh, him just being a burden to Sonic, and it's just like, hey, remember that time you stopped Eggman from blowing up Station Square? Or when the, or when the, uh, or when, like, I, I, I haven't played Lost World, so it's just like, I, I don't remember that. Yeah, like, or when you saved me that one, or when you saved me there, which, that moment actually has a bit more resonance as well for like people who played forces because one i think probably like the most infamous scene in that game like outside of anything with infinite i suppose is this one scene where tails is basically he's like fixing like he's fixing a robot out in the city and that and chaos zero like the basic like the basic bitch form of chaos that you fight at the beginning of sa1 appears yeah. behind him and then he just starts cowering and goes sonic help me with like it's like that's the like that's the moment that pissed off a lot of longtime fans uh, just because yeah like him going from being able to take on Eggman to just cowering like that that's yeah. the moment in particular that like a lot of people were thinking of when uh, Tails' cutscenes were coming up yeah like I mean like I, like, I know I, I know like, like I, think he, I think he even mentions that in the actual scene as well yeah it's just like I I, I like uh the uh the comment from Tails like then I'm then I'm wildly inconsistent <laughs> translation <laughs> then I'm inconsistently <laughs> written. <laughs> yep. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> yeah, but... that's I think, and I think that's, I think that's like the most, and I think that's. Sorry, I'm talking uh, for Knuckles. I'm moving on. I'm talking about Knuckles, but oh, for him, fine. it kind of felt like the most. It felt like the most character development that he'd gotten since like, like the most, like the most depth his character had since I want to say SA one. Like, because hmm. that's the last time that it really feels like they kind of focus more on his isol on his like isolation like the isolated side of him or like yeah. a part that feels kind of lonely in that like kind of caught yeah. up in his past and uh like there's also a which um i want to bring this up because i saw this like uh this video i got a recommendation after i played frontiers where it's just like someone was like uh making a critique about sonic frontiers saying like Amy is the worst character in Sonic Frontiers, and they have, like, a picture of her from, like, her old, like, uh, mid-2000s, uh, like, mid-2000s image is, like, passionate, and then just, like, uh, they, they posted a picture of her in Frontiers and just, like, wor like poorly written, and I'm like, okay, that's Cap. That is Cap. Uh, was that... Was it, what, hold on, when was that video posted? Do you remember when that video was posted? Was it, like... I, I don't know. Uh, did like, see, like, I, how long ago? Because... That could have been talking about, like, Amy before Frontiers as well, because, you know I mean, there was, like, a five-year gap between, like, Force and Frontiers, so... And, yeah, Amy yeah, really uh, just, uh... She barely had a character, and she barely had a character in Forces, so... You know, I can see it for that, but... They do take her character in, like, a different direction for Frontiers compared to how she normally is, as, like, Sonic's wannabe girlfriend or, like, his love interest one-sided love interest I, I would have to find the uh the picture or whatnot or i i have to look it up on my own to uh, be able to see but um anyway my here's my take I'll... on amy ultimately um i i remember playing like you know the days of like sonic cd and everything and i remember that's when they more or less they kind of introduced her um and yeah she was always to me just the annoying stalker love interest character and it's just like I I remember watching so Sonic X and that did not uh just uh that did not like improve my impression on her like it just throughout the years no matter what so it, like just Amy was one of the worst uh just like not necessarily worst but definitely most one dimensional characters written to me and when it came to Frontiers I really like what they did like she definitely feels a lot more fleshed out more three dimensional I really like it. Yeah, I think it's definitely. I think it also doesn't help that like Amy being so passionate and kind of bubbly with that kind of does distract from the fact that you know, in story she is meant to be like, you know, beyond that like an actually like caring and very friendly person who like is very considerate of others' feelings. Yeah, like that's part of her character beyond just the. I don't want to say yandere, but like the kind of obsessive fangirl side that she kind of gets was getting flanderized as for a while. Yeah, like like I said, um, like stalker. Very yeah, like. And like, like, yeah, like, like her caring for the Cocos and that, and like trying to help them in that, like, that's very interesting for her being like how she normally is. Yeah. Because like, obviously, like in that situation, she's not going to be as focused on flirting with Sonic and that, and like, you know, being overly lovey dovey and shit like that. Because you know, it's a different, it's like a, it's not really the situation that calls for it, you know. Yeah. 
she's stuck in digital limbo and he's like and they're trying to figure out what the fuck is happening with them yeah they're uh, trying to figure out what the fuck has happened with these islands and why they're on them basically and why the like the chaos animals are there yeah uh, when it comes to, uh, and, I, 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 and I guess in the grand scheme of things, I, I probably misspoke uh, because when I, I, I said, like, you know, this was the first time I, I remember Amy being more fleshed out. Um, I know it's a comedy series in the grand scheme of things, and the game fucking sucks, but Sonic Boom <laughs> Amy is actually really good as well. I know it's a comedy series and everything, hey. but... <laughs> no, like, no, like, unironically, Sonic Boom Rise of Lyric isn't good, <laughs> yeah. but... The character, like the actual character interactions, and especially the animation, but that's a bit off. But that's a bit off topic. Is actually pretty damn good in that game. Like the character interactions, like and in, even in like Boom itself, not just the cartoons, which obviously are very funny and well done. Like, yeah, like that's the, that was like the best version of Amy that had existed at that time. And I'm glad the game version, and I'm all for the game like taking aspects of that to like you know incorporate into our character. Also, I, yeah, I, I think, know we also, weren't. Also, I know. Uh, I just real quick. I know we weren't talking about this or anything, but I just want to say, I did not really like Knuckles' voice actor in Frontiers. Really? Huh. It was, it was very uh, like I. I don't know. I don't know necessarily how Knuckles is supposed to speak or and how Knuckles is supposed to sound, but I don't know. Maybe it's just because either I'm used to Idris Elba's Knuckles or um, who they got for like just <laughs> Knuckles and Sonic Boom. But just, uh, just hearing him, like, sound like this and whatnot, I'm not necessarily for. I, Fair enough, I guess. I, uh, I don't want to, I don't want to of... imagine Charlie as Knuckles, <laughs> alright? <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm not sure which Charlie you're talking about, but alright. Voice critical. Alright, oh, fuck. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah you're kind of hearing it, wow. you're kind of thinking now, he sounds like voice critical. <laughs> To an extent, I guess, um, Knuckles is a, uh, well, first off, in Boom, Knuckles, in these games, Knuckles is voiced by Dave B. Mitchell, who's, I think this is the first main game where he's been the voice of him. I think he voiced him in, he voiced him in, like, a prologue that was made for Frontiers before it came out, and he voiced him in one of the racing games, but before that, he was voiced by Travis Willingham, who's the voice that you've heard in, like, Boom and that. That's who I was thinking of, because I was like, yeah, I that's him. before. Like, yeah, Travis Willingham absolutely does a great Knuckles. Like, he's a really great voice actor. Like, yeah, like... No offense to his actor now, and no offense to his actor in Frontiers, but I'm just sorry, it's just like, I, it does not click with me. No, it's fair. Like, it's fair enough, mate, because honestly, even with, like, Roger and that, my favorite Sonic voices are still, like, the 2000s era stuff, with, like, the four kids dub. Like, yeah. Jason Griffith is still my favorite Sonic, and Dan Green is still my favorite Knuckles. And I guess Mike Pollock's my favorite Eggman, but that kind of feels like cheating when he's still voicing the character. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, uh, like, also, um... Yeah, I mean... Uh, Colleen O'Shaughnessy definitely is a really wonderful Tails. Yeah, like, she does a... Yeah, like, she's the best voice that he's ever had, basically. Yeah. Like, I like like I like the four kids actress, and I liked, uh... What's, oh, what's her name? Uh, Kate... Kate Higgins? It's not Kate... Uh, Kate Higgins, it's not Kate Winslet. That's yeah. the... That's Prince William's wife. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, Kate Higgins, that's it. Yeah, she does... Like, she did a good job as him. Uh, his four kids voice actor, Sarah, something or other, did a good job as well. Yeah, like, I, uh, but, I think... Yeah, Colleen's like, a... In the grand scheme of things, when it came to, like, the four kids dub of Sonic, I think, like, the only voice I wasn't necessarily too sure about was, like, Charmy's, but then again, Charmy doesn't necessarily have the great track record of having good voice actresses. Well, he's had... I like, be fair, he's had, like... I think he's had three of them, and... I guess his forces, like his modern, like his modern forces one, is like the best one by te by a technicality. I mean, like, I don't know, like Dubis, like <laughs> Dubis Goobis came out with a like a parody Sonic uh, animation for this, and who they who he got for Charmy actually sounds really great. Was it moist? Was it moist critical? <laughs> 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 I'm a freebie, freebie, freebie. <laughs> we <laughs> Uh, <laughs> anyway, um, but yeah. So the voice, the yeah, the voice cast in this game did a good, did like a really good job yeah. overall. Who played like a little Sage? Than the previous. Sage was. Hold on, I will look it up because it is obviously she's a new character, but it's not a voice actress I've heard of before. 
Yeah. Sage, Sonic, voice actor, English, because I don't need the Japanese actress. But funnily enough, her Japanese voice... Actually, no. Funny thing with both of their actresses, and either both of them have played Rei Ayanami in dubs of, in like, different versions of Evangelion, like, her really? Japanese voice actress is just Rei's Japanese voice, and I have Ryan Bartley. That's who played ah. that's who played Sage, and she voiced Ray in the Netflix double believe. Okay. Alright. Yeah, well, I mean yeah, like, she was, yeah, she was a good she, was, she was a she was great, uh she was great as Sage. Also, Sage, uh, definitely again, one of the best uh new edition characters and like I, I know Agreed. like one of the biggest concerns and I can't uh I, I can't like confirm or did, I can't really confirm any of this, but it's it's like one of the biggest concerns is whether or not she's just gonna be a part of Frontiers or continue forever or just like it could be a recurring character. And I mean like in the grand scheme of things, when you really think about it, like I mean, take a look at Sonic 06, which is considered to be one of the worst games of <laughs> Sonic, right? Silver, Blaze, yeah. like those two those two characters were characters that kept reoccurring in Sonic games, at least. That's what my thought process is, is that even though, like, you know, this game is definitely 7 out of 10, like, definitely Sage will come back. I mean, they, they, they draw, like, uh, they mention uh, characters like Orbot and Cubot, which is, like, two little uh, Eggman droids that got more of a, a little more of a shining light in the animated series of Boom. But, I mean, the, yeah, the fact uh, that they've those... Been yeah, they've, they've been around since, like, Sorry, they've been around since like colors, like colors and that as well. They've been around yeah. because people generally, generally like, like them and like their comedy. Yeah, and it's just uh, yeah. And, and when it came, and when it comes to yeah. this, I think it's just like, even if you know, uh, like in the rest of the things of people are like a little concerned. I don't think we'll really have much of a problem because a lot of people enjoy Sage. Yeah, like and without spoiling anything, the end of the game does can does definitely imply that she'll be back, that she'll be back later on in some form. Oh yeah. You know, no spoilers with we'll, it. We'll get and also, to, we'll get to spoilers I'll, later. <laughs> yeah, I will give like a, a small, like a small addendum for that point you made. Um, I'd say Blaze kind of came back more so because people really loved her in Sonic Rush, which is where she made her debut. And by that point, like the team that made that was working on a sequel to that, where you know she would appear again anyway because she's one of the main characters in that. Yeah. So I think that's kind of why Blaze is like, at the very least, Sega is like more confident using her versus her in 06, where she was. Like basically a non-entity plot-wise. Yeah. Like the only reason people like her in 06 is because people like Blaze from Rush, and she had some of the most fun gameplay in 06. Yeah. yeah. And it's all like... three stages of it. Yeah. <laughs> um. And when it came to both uh, Blaze and Silver, I do remember them being in like uh, Sonic Rivals, which was a PSP game. Uh, and, yeah, Silver. Yeah. Silver was. A, I don't think Blaze. I don't think Blaze was. But I right, Silver was I, in. Like, was okay, in, Silver. Was in. I don't. Th I think Silver was playable. I remember Blaze maybe being. In yeah, the he story. was. I'm not sh not sure on that, but he was definitely playable in like both of the Rivals games. Yeah. And he and he also and also he made the prestigious honor of making the roster and the multiplayer mode of Sonic and the Secret Rings. I'm so proud of him. <laughs> well, it was. It's there's a game that came out. About 15, 16 years. Oh my god, that game is 16 years old now. <laughs> Holy fuck. <laughs> I, I can feel the gray hairs coming in. Oh my god. Oh god. Oh my god, I'm married. Oh my god. I have a house. I see. <laughs> okay, I know, like, I know like people joke about like how much time passes, but that's like the first thing that's really genuinely just hit me that how much time has passed from yeah. one point to another that I've yeah. lived through. How do you think I feel Holy as the shit. person who played Sonic R? <laughs> Good yeah, question, that's... mate. How do you think I'll... Uh, how do you think I'll feel about my first game being a Cash Banuka 2? Entranced! I don't know, I don't know how to do a fucking meme for that. <laughs> the, the second Crash GBA game, that game's like... That game is 20 this year. That game is nearly 20 years yeah. old, I think. Uh... Fuck. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> anyway. Uh, <laughs> existentialism aside. Yeah, um... So... I guess we can get into this. Uh, let's talk about the fishing segment, aka uh, what they, aka the mini game the they brought back the game. from. Yeah, the mini game they brought back from Sonic Adventure and did absolutely better. Honestly, it's not like it's a completely different fucking game from Adventure because yeah. Adventure was just a fishing simulator. Yeah, it like was. just full on, like full on. I think it was literally just. I think I could be misremembering this, but I think when that game came out in the Dreamcast. 
like it was compatible with this uh, fishing rod uh, accessory Sega made for like one of their fishing games. And I think this the stuff in Adventure was made just to like kind of advertise that a bit. <laughs> I, I could be wrong on that, but it I, I would not surprise doubt that, me. Considering that, like a lot of games centered around, like you know, Sega, Sega, or even Nintendo, like a lot of games have had, like it was, it's definitely like I definitely would say it's, it was definitely back in the day where it's just like games came with like a particular like plastic, cheap plastic uh, gimmick or whatever, like a gun or whatever. So I, I don't did not, I don't doubt it. Yeah, like, and to be fair, the big, like the big fishing stuff is basically. A quick time of it's basically just a quick time event stuff, but considering how much you're going to be using it, that's maybe for the best. Yeah. Considering how much stuff there is to catch in it. Yeah. Remember when uh fucking uh, remember when Sonic Riders had a had a like uh just a, a fucking surfboard that you could just ride while you play the game. Oh good. Uh, I'm trying to think. Oh, that that was free ride. That was free riders, wasn't it? That that was I, that was that was either free riders or that oh, was Sonic God, Riders. I'll like they had no that. like because no, i don't think writers ever had that i think it was just okay i think oh, hold on i think you might be crossing some wires there mate because writers just use again like a standard controller i think you might be thinking of tony hawk right because that came with an actual like surfboard con like a okay, skateboard no, no, controller I, you could use i swear i i feel like it, it, it was either like writer was... like free riders was a connect freeders free riders was a connect game because it so, so you could use your body and it like mimics you being on a surfboard not a surfboard a, a hoverboard but it didn't actually come with one as far as my way or anyway maybe hang on uh like tony hawk raid sonic raider like, I, I, could, yeah i, I know see it, you crossing it, the wires with it <laughs> And they both came out the same year, actually, like, both of the ones that kind of had you mimicking it, so. It's... Uh... Oh, maybe. I, I, I don't know. I remember seeing, like, this video of someone playing, like, a Sonic uh, Riders game with, like, uh, like a special, I don't know, like, little surfboard or whatever that came with the game. I don't know if it was, surfboard. like... I don't. I don't remember. Necessarily. I'm genuinely thinking, like, cause I've, if that's true, and I've never heard anything about, I've never heard anything about that, like. I don't know. Maybe, maybe it was just like. It would have been actually. <laughs> maybe it was just like a special challenge. Thing. Mm. I don't know. I don't know. Like, granted, uh, now I'm thinking it would have been cool if Raiders of Zero Gravity supported the balance board because it was on the Wii. Maybe it was the. Balance I think it came board. out after the balance board. <laughs> maybe, maybe that's what I'm thinking. It, of. No, maybe that was the balance board. So you're crossing like four different wires at once, basically. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. The mid-2000s... The mid-2000s were a fucking weird time. Yeah. Uh, I guess for, like, one last thing with Big, then. Um, kind of a cool touch is when you actually catch something in his minigame, it plays, like, a short sample of, like, Big's theme from Adventure 1, like, when you actually catch a fish. Like that jazzy song. Yeah. Yeah. Not the one. You... You need, you need to listen to the actual song, but like it plays like the first few seconds of it if you listen to that after we're done or something. I don't know. Oh. It's, it's your choice. <laughs> uh, okay. I, I don't know. I'll look it up. I, I can I can hum it off the top of my head. Yep. Yeah. Anyway, um, yeah. I guess like if you're going to keep going with Big, then there's also the <laughs> stuff you can get with them, including the egg memos and stuff like that. Yeah. Which, that's some spicy story stuff there. Which is kind of like the bulk of Eggman's. It kind of gives the bulk of Eggman's feelings towards Sage as well, so that's yeah. kind of important, I suppose. <laughs> yeah, I mean, even without it, like, in the grand... Because I, I didn't do it on uh, my first playthrough, but even without it, I definitely still, like, liked his relationship with Sage. Yeah. Also, also, it, also it's kind of weird. Also, it's kind of... As, a long t as someone who's played the games for most of his life, it's kind of... This is going to sound weird to say, but it's odd hearing, like, stuff from... The more obscure spin-off or like the more obscure side games get mentioned because the name drop stuff from like the shadow the hedgehog game from 2005 and like the lore stuff from sonic riders like in one of the like in one of the memos in that which is it's weird to, it's weird to hear again <laughs> you know welcome it kind of makes me feel a bit validated but still yeah i mean i i mean in a way i guess it's like I guess despite all the game's flaws and everything, I guess in some ways you could say that it was in some ways like a love letter to like just the franchise as a whole. Yep. 
which also may have something to do with the game's writer, who... Uh, you, uh, I, Ian Flynn, right? Yep, yeah, Ian Flynn. He's yeah. someone... Uh, I think I've said this to you casually, but he was the right. Well, he was. He still is the writer for the Sonic comics, and yeah. he's been doing it since 2006. Yeah. He's like... I, and, I, yeah, I, like, the man's a... The man's like a fucking Sonic lore nut. He, you know... Does a great job with the characters in the comics, and that he knows all of the like pretty much the deepest recesses of this series history. So that stuff being mentioned doesn't surprise me, and also the writing is explains the writing being much better as well. Yeah, honestly, I, I yeah. the character the character interactions. Because I, I think like what he said happened. It was was the way that, like he was given like, the stuff he was given to write was like the main dialogue and like. You know, writing out how the main story progresses because he was given a synopsis and like uh, which characters he could use and like what the general story outline would be by Sega. I think that's how he said it in like some interviews and that. Uh, yeah. Um, but yeah. Uh, also, good job, Ian. Yeah, he, definitely. Like, 100%. Like, I, like, Ian Flynn, if you're listening, doubtful, but if you are listening to this, yes, absolutely. Loved the story. Like, I can say a lot. There's a lot to say about the gameplay, but definitely. The story, loved it, absolutely. Um, speaking yeah, of, I don't think he was involved in this in the gameplay. <laughs> well, I mean, uh, I, I hope he isn't because I don't want to badmouth him. Because we're gonna let's let's get into the <laughs> gameplay because uh, oh boy. the gameplay. Okay, go first. When it wants to be Devil May Cry, Metal Gear Rising, I enjoy it. It's like it has some really stupidly enjoyable moments, like like a fucking robot throwing Sonic into a fucking boulder. Like, yeah, okay. <laughs> That's or, a cutscene, to be fair. Yeah, <laughs> and also fucking them absolutely ripping off Metal Gear Rising with like Sonic picking up a giant sword and using it on an enemy. Like, okay, if you want to do stupid shit like that. 100% I am all for it like if it's it's stupid and I love it and just yes 100% go for it but there are times where I'm just like okay you're either getting a little too cute with this or you are trying to pad your resume how do you mean how do you mean like in in what regard like in what regards are you saying this is it like well to general game back or like to the, the boss cut, fights and that cut back to the chaos island part where it's just like that skydiving bit yeah the, okay someone was obviously padding for the resume on that part but, um... Who the, fuck passes their, who the fuck passes for the resume with, Oh boy, look at all these bouncy springs I can hang in the sky. <laughs> hey, you want to see how I can rid up hitboxes oh, with Mr. animations? Azuka. Let me do a loop-de-loop -loop here. Um, but other than... Oh, Mr. Azuki, you like these donuts? But other than that, I would say, um... To bring back to the Chaos Island, I definitely would say, like, one of the... I'd say aggravating parts of that was definitely the whole part with like the stuff related to the shield. Like it was okay. It was nice to like you know oh uh, just uh, just deflect off a shield and ride on it like a like a giant UFO. Yes, and then you have yeah. to steer big, it in the most fucking uncontrollable thing. fucking steering portion of the goddamn game. <laughs> and I okay, and, to be fair, like <laughs> I think that is like the challenge of it, like. Like, the actual thing doesn't control badly, it's just that the issue is the knight's actually being smart. He realizes, hmm, he's hijacked my shield. I'm going to keep that blue, pr that golden prick as far away from me as I possibly can. So we just pelt you with missiles. I, on my second playthrough, I tried doing that. <laughs> it, I had to go around five times before it finally hit him. <laughs> I'm not kidding. It's just... <laughs> <laughs> like... Uh. Uh. I think it's. I think it's more honestly considering like how much time you have. If you just max out your rings with it, I find it more humorous than like annoying. But I can see your point. Yeah. Other than that, um... it's kind of. <laughs> Other than that, like I. Plus, I to be fair, yeah. hey, to be fair, it means you get to listen to. It means you get to listen to find your flame for more. So. Oh it's my not god! All bad. Oh god! I don't think we even talked about that. Oh my god! Like, can we talk We've about? Not talked oh, about the music. Let's no. talk about the music because. This is some of the best music I've heard, and I think, like, for a long time, I know a lot of people personally, like, a lot of people really enjoy them and whatnot. Personally, I was never really a fan of Crush 40. I, I wasn't really... Eh, yeah, fair enough, fair it enough, was, fair yeah. enough. They are very... It's, but it's called butt rock for a reason. Yeah, it, it's very 2000s butt rock, honestly. And, like, I, I think one of the only oh, few no, 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 no. examples I have is, like... <laughs> 
the Sonic Adventure 1 opening. Um, some Open music in Sonic Adventure 2, obviously. The Shadow of the Hedgehog. I was going to say, like, it's. <laughs> and I think that's it. Okay, I was going to say, I kind of wish. I kind of wish you stopped with Adventure 1, because that means the only Crush 40 song you like is the one they didn't make in the 2000s. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been kind of funny if that was the case, but either, either way. <laughs> I mean, like... Uh, either way, like, it's like... I, I, I love Crush... Like, oh, yeah, <laughs> oh, sorry. No, it's fine. Go no, ahead. No, I, I, I love Crush 40, but I fully admit, like... I'll, they are... Like, it's a very dumb... Like, it's a very dumb love. Like, it's the... Um, it's the part of my, it's the part that makes my brain go yes 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 like yeah. it's the part that just gets your brain going monkey mode yeah like it, will, it's that kind of music i will admit there are two tracks in particular outside of the games i listed that i actually do kind of like and they're in sonic heroes and that is team chaotix and this machine which were not with neither of which were done by crush 4 eh? <laughs> maybe that's why <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're, you're really just hold on to that shovel so so it don't let go. <laughs> it's just like all right, I, 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 maybe, all right, I'm okay. Maybe I can defend Crush Four by saying, oh wait, they didn't do that. Oh, uh, well, fuck. Did you? Did, <laughs> you, you know, you said you like you said you like tie them all. You said you like the shadow opening theme. They did they did yeah. that. Yeah, I definitely. Yeah, like, but yeah, like I'll this this is the game I bounce out again. I love like I love their music like. Uh, Levin, like Levin Lair and I Am All Of Me, Never Turn Back, uh, Mate of the Wind. Uh, like, there's plenty of, like, they've done plenty of songs that, I've, that I fucking love. Yeah, Levin Lair is good. Um, but I am, but even, but even, but to be, to be fair, like, they are like, they're a band where most of their members are just kind of getting up in the age. Aside from, I guess, Jun Sunoi, because he's the guitarist, so vocals are less of an issue, but, you know, I'm, I'm fine hearing like different artists and that, two different yeah. Sonic, like, give main themes and that to Sonic. That's and, been the case for a while, because... And when it came to, but yeah, like, music, the music of Sonic Frontiers, it's just, like, the, the, like, just the amount of people they got on board <laughs> for, like, vocals and everything, like, it is amazing. Definitely, like, outside, like, okay, I know a lot of people really, like, I, okay, Undefeatable is the meme song. Like, it's good, but it's just like... Yeah, it's, it's the rules of nature. It's the rules it's of nature the rules of this of game. Nature. It's the rules of nature. It is the... Uh, uh, okay, I was about to say... Bury the light. Or, de or devil tr or devil trigger, I guess. Devil trigger. Devil trigger. I was thinking that. Um, it was that. And it's yeah. just like... Then you also have, like, <laughs> Find Your Flame and... Uh, oh, God, I, I'm... Break through... Break through, break through it all. That's the other break one. Break through it all. Break through it all. <laughs> that's the one people forget. Yeah, I, like I, it's <laughs> like those two songs in particular stuck out to me just because like both of them, like they have that very like mid two thousands AMV type feel to that, and I love it. That like, is like, that's like the vibe. That is pretty much you can tell that's the vibe they were kind of really trying to go for for this. Yeah. And yeah, like I think that's where Sonic has always been like at his best. Like. Be embracing that kind of cringy but also like cheesily cringy side yeah, of them. It's like it, yeah, I guess in a way. <laughs> That's like, like, better it's, to sum up. It's oh my god, like I think the best way to describe it is like, okay, have you ever heard of the artist MF Doom? Possibly. Uh I don't the name's not ringing a bell, but I might have heard um, one of their songs. It's um okay, so you can look up this up, but there's an album called Danger Doom, The Mouse and the Mask, and it's a full on like comedy rap album that focuses on shows that aired on Adult Swim. Now, here's the thing. All right. It's like, okay. like they, they have, like, the song called Basket Case, which, if you ever watched Harvey Birdman, which, you, do you know what Harvey Birdman is? I know I know what it is. I've never seen it, though. Uh, like, it's it's basically, the original like, or they had, like, they had, like, the, I think they had the rights and whatnot to use certain Hanna-Barbera characters, so we were like, okay, let's take, like, Scooby-Doo and... <laughs> Scooby Doo and Shaggy, and let's make them seem like they're like deranged gangsters instead of just saying no, they're just stupid. <laughs> like that's that's okay, literally a line. Like Harvey Birdman goes to like <laughs> Shaggy and Shaggy and Scooby Doo when they're in like when they're in prison and whatnot. It's just like okay, so uh, what's your what's your name? Like uh, who is Shaggy? And he holds up gang signs like like that be me. And then Harvey Birdman. Okay, that's your okay, that's your street lingo. Out and wait, what's your real name? <laughs> 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 oh my god. Uh, but like, anyway. It, like it's Norville, man. <laughs> oh <my God>. um, <laughs> no. 
anyway, um, so, um, but yeah, like, but yeah, it's, my point I'm trying to make is that, um, it was very, like, it very much is, like, it's obviously, like, not supposed to be, it doesn't feel like it's supposed to be taken incredibly seriously, but at the same time, like, you cannot knock the amount of effort and, like, just energy and passion that was put into it, like, no. it is amazing. Like, let's put it like this, they perfectly match the energy that, like, the early like a 2000s era sonic vocal themes matched like yeah those songs would fit right in with like we mentioned them but like open your heart live and learn like what i'm made of uh i am like i am all of me his world they fit like like they all f hell with me like the final boss team in sonic and the black knight yeah all these songs feel like they fit perfectly in that game just the because that game had vocal themes for its bosses as well mm -hmm. and it's like they capture that exact same vibe of being cheesy but the most but like the best kind of cheesy you can manage with this kind of stuff. Yeah, uh, I think like I think like TV tropes calls it like Narm Charm or something like that. But huh. it's TV tropes, so you know, yeah. it's like be something being stupid but being so cool or like done so well that you get completely enraptured in it, regardless of it being kind of stupid. Yeah, it's kind of like it, it, it's kind of like the equivalent of like watching a B movie. Like you know it's stupid, you know it's bad, but it's still enjoyable. Like it's intentionally enjoyable. Yeah. Ex okay. Yeah, like, and also, like, this is the one that I don't hear people praise a lot. Uh, I really like the final boss theme as well. Like, the one that plays for, like, the true final boss. Oh, yeah. I, no I went spoilers, back and, I went back and listened to it. Case, it's, but... Yeah, it's also really good. Like, Yeah, like, I think it kind of gets overshadowed because people are kind of mixed at the best times about the actual we'll, fight. But, we'll get to, yeah, the track we'll itself is that, really damn good. We'll get to that because we're getting close. But um, I do want to ask, Yeah, like outside of the boss themes... Favorite cyberspace theme? Yeah, like, uh, I was actually going to mention this while we were here with it, because this is something that I kind of haven't seen people mention with the soundtrack, and it's some and it's something that's always kind of, I've always, not so much bugged, it's not something that's bugged me, but it's something I've noticed. Mm -hmm. When people are talking about this game's, like, how great the soundtrack is, they kind of do the Metal Gear Rising thing of just focusing on like the vocal track specifically because you know obviously they're the most memorable they play yeah. during the most you know hype inducing moments of the game but the rest of the soundtrack doesn't really get much if any focus from those from like those people like you don't yeah. hear people talking about the islands theme because it's very minimalistic and atmospheric and you don't really hear many people talking about the cyberspace themes just because i'm guessing they've not most of them haven't heard them or paid much attention to them yeah and I mean, like, if, if yeah, like anybody, those... who's, anybody who's seen my streams knows that one of my favorite uh, cyberspace tracks is Flowing, which is one of the earliest tracks, and it's just, I love that song. Yeah, I think that one was actually, that was, like, the first one they showed off, like, as part, they did, like, a few, they previewed, like, a few of the tracks on Sonic's YouTube channel, and I think that was the first one they did, so, yeah, that's most people's favorite. Uh, I also really like, I also, that one's probably my favorite as well, because I'm boring, <laughs> it can be boring sometimes, but I also really like uh, 2.5's theme, Deja Vu. Oh, Deja Vu's absolutely, I was about to bring that up, it's like, Deja Vu, yeah. Deja Vu, I, I have like, a, like, I downloaded some of my favorite cyberspace tracks, hang on, I'll, I'll, uh, yeah. I'll pull them up. <laughs> yeah, I also really like, uh, the main mail like the main, like a theme that plays on Chronos Island, like that kind of oh yeah uh, piano, like the kind of piano theme that builds yeah. up. That theme is fucking magical. I yes. love it. Uh, like I, it's weird. It's no, no good. No, it's weird to say. Like one last one is the theme for the drip, like the drip maestro himself, Supreme. <laughs> uh. <laughs> I don't know if like, that's a spoiler. <laughs> like the theme that plays for like the first, yeah, for, like it, that. Uh, that boss a full version of the, uh, uh, the title track right because it no like... it's like it does it's a it does like the metal gear rising thing of one sec oh hold on one sec uh oh, okay. i thought i heard some I, thought I heard something there on my side uh what it does is it kind of does the metal gear rising thing of start point if it starts like playing the instrumental track then after a certain point it like switches over to the vocals like mm -hmm. after you reach a certain point in the boss i think like halfway through it and i actually prefer that version over the original because kind of controversial statement i'm not that fond of the regular version of i'm here <gasps> just like the main you? vocal theme <laughs> fuck come on that's the one that no one cares about <laughs> i'm just fucking hey, you said you like crush party i'm all allowed this you said you don't like Crush for I, I Yeah, that. I know. I'm just fucking with you. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Same here. Uh, uh, but yeah, like, I actually like the instrumental for it. I don't like the main vocal one. Mm -hmm. 
Kind of like, kind of like, kind of like Forces theme, actually, funnily enough. Because <laughs> like the vocal, like the instrumental for Forces theme, uh, Fist Bump, I think it's called. I really like that one, like the guitar work on it. But the actual main vocals and like the lyrics are. Eh. Yeah, I get it. Be, I get be it. nice about it. I get it. Have you? Well, have, have you even heard that song actually? <laughs> I have. And it's just here. Uh, my my opinion's here or there on it, honestly. Like uh, that's my opinion with a lot of Crush Forty music. It's just like it's here or there. That's that's even Crush. Okay, okay Crush Forty didn't do every vocals theme, mate. <laughs> like the last one. Like the I, last, I, the I, last I'm just gonna make this whole. Theme. I'm just gonna make this whole podcast. Let's <laughs> shit on. I, I'm just gonna shit on Crush Forty when you're gonna have to listen. <laughs> Actually, the funny. Hold on, like the funny thing is, did do you think Crush Forty have done? Do you think? Okay, here's a question for you. Of the vocal themes in this game, which one was done by Crush Forty? Um. Take a guess. Take a guess. Find your flame. Hmm. Is that your final answer? Yeah. Correct question. They didn't do any of them. It's fun to be a dick sometimes. Yeah, it's absolutely. I, I, I love doing it sometimes. <laughs> yeah, um, like. But I, I found also well, I found the I, uh, music. Um, so some of my favorite tracks in like cyberspace of Sonic is uh, Dropaholic, uh, Go Back to Your Roots, Deja Vu, Transparent Highway, Ghost Lab, and Bring Me Back. Yeah, honestly, I need I need to actually sit down and listen to the cyberspace tracks a lot them, because during yeah. gameplay, like they did kind of blend together for me, especially since some of them get very EDM, which. Yeah, you know that could be a bit repetitive for someone who's as uncultured as myself. I I, I, nice I, about I it. personally like I personally like EDM, so I mean I I I'm a big fan of the Tekken soundtrack. Yeah, like, so that should say everything you I, need to know. My dude, I like the I like Yakuza Like a Dragon soundtrack and No Straight Roads music, so I understand. Yeah. Warmakers, Warmakers peak music. Warmakers peak. That's, if you, if you even know what song I'm talking about. Yes, I do. I have it. I have it installed. Yes, my good, good for you. You know what? Not you know downloaded. I took it a step further. Also, I installed it. Also, Ko. Also, Cog from Lost Judgment. That song is badass. I've heard of that song. I actually really like it. Yeah, yeah, like it's really good. Uh, plays with it plays when you fight the CEO of Sex himself as well. So that's so that's pretty badass. <laughs> I'll send you a picture of what he looks like later on, but okay. either way, uh, yeah. So what were we, so what the fuck were we talking about? We were talking about the music, um, but I think okay, we yeah, pretty much yeah, like Pete part on that. Uh, I did want to bring this back to the music gameplay. again. <laughs> I did want to bring this back to the gameplay because there is one part that um, sure. apparently looking into a lot of people hated, and I was just like, I didn't really see what to hate personally. <laughs> And that is the pinball game. I think I know what you're talking about. The pinball game. Okay, 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 okay that's not what I was expecting, oh, but I can what see what you mean. What were you uh, <laughs> the final boss, I thought you were oh. going to. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I, I have a bias on that because I played the fucking Drip Goku remix, okay? Understandable. <laughs> But yeah, the that's gonna make game, no sense. That's gonna make no sense to anyone who doesn't watch your streams. I, I I'll link my my vod to the. I'll link the <laughs> in the description. Uh, uh, but but yeah, yeah but the yeah. pinball game. It was like like the first the like I guess a lot of people just really didn't like it, and I heard some people just like it was because of the physics and everything. And I guess you know the way it was like the way the pinball actually kind of controlled and everything. I could kind of see it, but personally, like. I mean, I, I was one of the people who played Sonic Adventure 1. Like, I was just like, you know what? This is straight oh. out of Sonic Adventure 1. I, I'm all for it. I think I actually posted about this when you, like, you mentioned it on Discord, but the issue with, like, to kind of play devil's advocate with it, mm -hmm. um, the issue that people had with it mostly was, well, a few things. One is kind of like, uh, just the sudden gameplay shift from, you know, gameplay like this to something completely different. Yeah. Uh, the fact that it's, the fact that you can fail through, like, no fault of your own because they're kind of janky pinball physics and there's yeah. holes at the both sides of them that it can fall down. Three, and three, if you, you know, if that does happen, then there's no way to get past it. You just need to keep trying again until you get lucky, basically, which, yeah, you, you, you can see why, I can see why that would piss people off with it, yeah. to be blunt. Like, it I kind of annoyed me like, with it I when I was playing that. I tried doing this in my second playthrough, but um, when I was playing my first playthrough, like when like my ball was about to go into like just the slides on the, the, the like the holes in the sides, but 
there was like a little arrow indicator that actually boosted it out. And it's just like, I remember that uh, definitely, I remember that definitely being a part of like uh, Sonic Adventure Pinball. But it's just like, it was interesting. I don't remember the, I don't remember like know what the thing was, but if I, when I, I don't know if it could have been because I was on hard mode, but when they went down the sides for me, they just did like that was just it. I lost the ball now. Tough shit. Uh, try oh. again. Maybe it's just. I don't know. That could have been a hard mode thing. Maybe it was different on normal. I'm not sure. It might have been like a score type thing where it's just like if you last like this long and get this many points without like uh, getting a ball sacrifice or something. I don't know. Like I haven't played pinball I think in quite could... a while. <laughs> yeah. I think it could have also gave people flashbacks to some of the previous games because in Lost World they had a section like that where you're forced to play pinball and if you didn't get enough points and you fell on the bottom you died and lost a life. Oh. And in, for and in Forces, there was a there was a level built around pinball, and unlike in SA2, it had a very distinct feature. The pinball physics were completely shit. <laughs> so yeah, <laughs> basically, Sonic fans are kind of really pissed off when it comes to are kind of trained to like just go into attack mode when it comes to pinball now. Yeah. Unless it's like in one of like unless it's like in Sonic Mania or something, I guess. Okay. But yeah, I didn't like I didn't like it very much. Glad to be done. And I think it being at the end of Chaos Island as well just kind of cemented it for most people as being like, oh, yeah. one last fuck you before you get to like the really good part, which is the boss fight. I mean, after like I mean, you already know after the skydiving whole shit and piece of shit and whatnot. Like, I mean, after that, I mean, playing pinball, it was definitely like just it it was like something that was at least a lot more different and, and a lot more tolerable in the grand scheme of things. But after just what I had to deal on Chaos Island, man, it was just uh, I don't know. I don't know, maybe it doesn't, yeah, like, I, I think guess it doesn't bother I, me that much. Actually, my initial reaction to it before getting annoyed was just befuddlement, for lack of a better term. Like, what, what the fuck? We're, we're playing pinball now? What? Uh, okay, I guess we're doing this. <laughs> like, I just kind of been yeah. in that mindset until I've failed the first time. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but yeah, um, yeah I, that was the that. Yeah. Was that. I, I, there's no real way. That's all I had to say. I, I, I guess there's no real way to go towards this. I mean, like, I guess we could talk a little more on, like, just kind of, like, I guess, favorite moments I guess, like, out of the out of the series, like, favorite little moments. Uh, like, just in general, like, from this game, or just, like, uh, favorite, just, um, I, 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 I don't like, know, I guess from this game as well, yeah. I don't know, um, I don't, I'm trying to think, actually, um, you want like, me to go? Like, a lot of them are just kind of like, you know, you, you, yeah, you go first, yeah. just so I get an idea yeah. of... I mean, what, like, one of the moments I liked out of uh, Sonic Frontiers is, like, the first time we see Eggman, and it's just like, you know, I've, ins I've installed various in our installations before this, but this is definitely more advanced. Hits a button on his shirt. Not yourself. Don't admit that to anyone. <laughs> <laughs> Other than that, yeah. um, I definitely, I would have to say, like, just... Little stuff like uh, just Sonic and Knuckles. Sonic and Knuckles is rivalry, which is you know two bros chilling in a desert five feet apart because they're not gay. <laughs> uh, uh, excuse me. I think you mean the, I think you mean the beginners game to how gay people flirt. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just staring at each. Just staring at each. Just staring yeah. daggers to each other. I also like uh, like just uh, sages. Like, mm. what is your end goal? Uh, sometimes it differs. Sometimes it's a big sign. Sometimes it's a ring. <laughs> just yeah. like, I, I, I just like I love I think, stuff like that it's just yeah I really like that was one of my favorite moments as well um beyond that I liked some of the flashbacks I liked some of the flashbacks with the ancients I liked the scene with uh basically like the scene where Tails like pours his heart out to Sonic and that and like Sonic gives him a pep talk just that's like a really sweet moment yeah like honestly, yeah I uh, definitely um oh man it's just like <clears throat> I, I, we didn't even talk about this, like how they connected, I think, uh, Sonic Adventure and the Chaos over to the Ancients. Yeah, like, that was something that, like, they actually did, they actually first kind of did that in, like, the prequel short that came out, I think, a week or two before the game did, and, like, that's when they realized, oh, that's what doing with the plot? Oh, that's inter that's actually really interesting. Let's see where like, they go with this. I were, if and, I yeah, were, like, like I, my memory's fuzzy, but was, like, in Sonic idea. Adventure, in Sonic Adventure, wasn't it, like, uh, Chaos just, like, uh, an ancient... Uh, that went all the way back to the days of the Echidnas. That's what they... Well, uh, the way it went in Adventure was basically Knuckles' tribe, which was just the Echidna, like the Echidna tribe or the, the Chakamak tribe, whatever yeah. the Pac-Man tribe or whatever they're called, 
they came to where the master em they stumbled upon the master emerald and basically the child were already there just like being like as a part of it and chaos was just like a child that had been mutated because of the power of like the chaos emeralds and the master emerald yeah like he was a protector of it but he'd been mutated because of like the power of them but yeah like this game are we getting to spoilers now <laughs> i mean uh is like there anything else we want to talk about before we get into major spoilers uh, well, the thing I was about to say was it kind of was like kind of spoiler adjacent, like it's retroactively a spoiler, I guess. Yeah, I mean, like, is there a, like I because I, I, I I'm fine with getting into spoilers now, but I mean, like, is there anything else about this game that you particularly like want to talk about? Or... Uh, I'm trying to th I'm trying to think. Um, I think we covered. I think like just to kind of like do you want to give like a, just a general final roundup for it then before we go into spoilers? Mm -hmm. Like a final roundup on like our thoughts on it, like spoiler free. Oh, yeah, um, Sonic Frontiers, without, like, uh, Major League going to spoilers, um, absolutely, like, I love what they do with the story, I love what they do with the characters, gameplay, um, it's here or there, it has some flaws, like, I haven't even talked about the one cyberspace level where you have to surf, like, that's, uh, and the, <laughs> oh, and the skateboarding, the skateboarding one, the skateboarding one, and it's absolutely fucked, <laughs> 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 oh my god would you, would you but, believe that's actually one of the original level designs as well um i i'd be tempted to say yes <laughs> like when, uh, when i say original i mean like made for this game not like original isn't originally from a different game like oh it's made for frontiers <laughs> that's what that's i, mean. I, that's what I mean. <laughs> like i realized wait this, that's a little vague i'm sure you clarify this <laughs> But yeah, overall, um, Sonic Frontiers, definitely a good game. I definitely, like, if you're a fan of Sonic and you've just kind of been disappointed with the way the series is going, I definitely recommend it. Um, and yeah, you're not gonna, you are going to either be disappointed or aggravated in some aspects, but um, it is, uh, overall, I think it's a competent game and I really like it. Yep. I'm kind of in a similar boat with it. Um, it's a it's a game where it obviously has a lot, like it has a lot of flaws, has a lot of rough edges, a lot of ways it can be improved. Like, I think even the director said it's kind of a public, like a public beta in a sense, in the sense of like, it's like, like they've said, like they've made the game as it is, and they're basically saying, okay, we know this is a good idea for the game, but we want to see what do people like about it, what should we improve, what should we get rid of, you know, basically that's kind of like what their approach is with this game. Because it is meant to, he's it is meant to be like the foundation for Sonic games going forward, like how Sonic Adventure was for 3D Sonic games back mm -hmm. in the 90s. Yeah, so basically, it's that's kind of how I view it as well. It's an int like it's an interesting experiment. It does a lot of it does a lot of good things. There's a lot of promise and potential with it. I'm just looking forward. I'm looking forward to see like how they improve on it. But for a first attempt with it, it's good. You know, enjoy the level design. I enjoy exploring. Uh, obviously a big step up in terms of story like story and uh, voice acting that compared to the other games uh would definitely rec would definitely recommend just keep an open mind with it and i guess like remember you don't need to do every cyberspace levels if one of them's pissing you off <laughs> yeah I, like i i, I found <laughs> if one out... of them's pissing you off like you've got plenty of you've got plenty of options to like pr proceed through the game without it you can always just like hang out with big for a while so if you don't like those then just skip them i found out later on you can easily get every single emerald just by fishing yep <laughs> yep like the cat hacked into, of course of course <laughs> of course big found a way to hack into the fucking mainframe to help him out <laughs> probably by complete fucking accident it's like zoro it's like zoro finding where the one piece is by fucking accident <laughs> I remember, I yeah. remember, oh my god, it just reminds me of, like, a meme where I just saw, it was just like, what if it, what if at the end of One Piece, like, Luffy, Luffy gives, like, people a map to One Piece, and he says, hey, Zoro has, them. Zoro knows where it is. <laughs> <laughs> no, like, I, think I, I remember seeing, like, a joke that, like, when they eventually find, like, a uh, laugh tale where, they, where, like, the One Piece is located, like, they're just looking around, and Zoro's like, yeah, I think I was here, I think I was here once before. <laughs> <laughs> like, he just, like, he just, like his sense of direction is so bad he found it by complete fucking accident. <laughs> <laughs> uh, God bless. Oh, man. Uh, anyway. Uh, yeah, let's get into spoilers. So, uh, boy, boy, yeah. Uh, 
Cocos are dead chaos. Chaos, <coughs> chaos and chaos's and chaos's ancestors were fucking aliens. <laughs> yeah. In fact, the Chow were in fact the Chow were also aliens technically because they're descendants of the ancients. Wow. Oh, that reminds That's me. Wild. I, I I saw this line posting around Twitter. I never got it in terms of going idle with Sonic, but uh, like when he had a bunch of Cocos around him, it's just like, huh. I wonder if there's a Chow Garden around here. <laughs> yeah, that's like... Uh, Ian Flynn, you cheeky, you cheeky <laughs> dick waffle. You cheeky bastard! <laughs> uh, he know, believe me, he fucking knows, because Sonic fans have been fucking asking for the Chow Garden since uh, SA2 came out. <laughs> yeah. As and I'm, st I'm still shocked they haven't done a mobile game for that. Like, that seems like fucking easiest money you could ever possibly make there. I'm actually, I'm kind of with you. How? Why haven't they done that? I mean, like, I, I don't know. Like, even just like, if it's full of like microtransactions and like, like scummy bullshit like that, you know, it's it's yeah. gonna make them money with it. So I don't see why okay. they haven't done it. Dragon Ball has a. <laughs> the Sonic fans are gonna buy it up. Dragon Ball has a mobile gacha game. Where the fuck is this? Exactly. Like, like the Chow Garden has fucking name, Brad. It has fucking. People know what the fuck it is, so Sonic fans are gonna Sonic fans are gonna buy it because they're Sonic fans and they're fucking insane. As, yeah. as, as a Sonic fan, for the record. Yeah. And pet and pet sim and people who played like mobile games for just like the pet sims or like those farm instants and that they're gonna like it just because you know they're cute little like they're cute little dudes who doesn't like the who doesn't like the Chow. Yeah. Pro Jared likes the Chow for God's sake. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and, um... Anyway, with that. uh... I guess I'll take your. I guess you want to take the lead with the spoiler stuff, right? So then I'll just kind um, of follow up on it. Yeah, so I guess we can get into spoilers pretty easily. Uh, spoiler alert for Sonic Frontier: Sonic fucking dies. Who wants to buy the bowl and kiss him? Uh, I guess all three. I guess all three of his friends actually want to get want to be technical about it. Let's make this. Let's make this. Let's make this into an orgy. <laughs> <laughs> no, I guess. You know, I well, would. I, guess I no would. Considering. I would be concerned with saying that, but considering that Deviant Art exists, I don't think I should really give a fuck. He also can really. Yeah, he just kind of gives. He just kind of gave him the equivalent of a cyber STD, just so he could get out of it. <laughs> oh, yeah. Actually, yeah, he got infected with. He got infected with. He got infected with cyber. He got infected with cyber psychosis. Gave it to all his friends, so they went to hang out with Big the Cat. That's my head cannon. <laughs> so because we never is... see, because we don't see them. <laughs> this is all. Oh, hey guys, what did you? Well... <laughs> this is all a fucking side story to cyber fucking runners. <laughs> <laughs> that's what. Oh, that's what those story. That's what those DLC stories are gonna. Actually, yeah, that could be what their DLC stories are. Oh yeah, that's right. Because they're, they're doing the DLC, DLC for that. Fuck, I so... forgot about that. So... Okay, so do you think like? Oh, do you think? It... Okay, so they could. It could either be like it's basically the same game, but you can play as different characters, or it's them being stuck in cyberspace, like either during that, like after that point with Sonic, like them trying to escape or that, or them like being in their own weird cyber dimensions. Honestly, all right. If you like, that could be interesting. Full like, expectations. More stuff I don't want. Interesting. I don't want to go down this route, but expectations in terms of high. I, in terms of DLC, would definitely 100% down, be down for a game mode where it's just like, you do play as all the other characters and whatnot, and it's just like, once you play through, like, the game as either Amy, Knuckles, Tails, like, all of them and everything, you then get to play the game as either Eggman or Sage. That's high expectation. Lowest expectation... And it's free... It's... It is free DLC as well, that is to remember. Like, all, yeah. this, all the DLC they're doing is free, they've said. Which, you know, good on them, but yeah, kind of set expectations with it. Yeah. Lowest expectations, I will say one thing though. that they did... Uh, hey, go ahead. I'll let you... No, like... Okay. Um, I guess, like, just kind of to say on that, when they showed off, like, the roadmap for what their content was, on the picture that showed off, like, that ought to be multiple playable characters, next to Tails, Knuckles, and Amy, there was a picture of Sage, which could have just been, like, a part of, like, the roadmap's design, like, a template, but... You know, just like on the like, it wasn't meant to be considered a part of that, but it could be hinting at it. But we'll have to wait and see, though. You never, you never know. Yeah, the it's lowest, not be told. We won't know until it comes expectation out. Expectation in terms of uh, what they will do, considering this game, I would fully expect like an anthology type deal where it's just like, y like uh, you get to play more in terms of like 
you it, it, alongside like the moments where you interact with Sonic, you also get to play as the characters and just like you get to see what goes on in their mind, but while like you know Sonic's off doing his own thing, like that's yeah, like, like lowest expectation in terms of what I'm expecting. I think low, like absolute lowest, would be that cyberspace stuff. But it's like, okay, did you ever play a game called Shantae Half Genie Hero? Yes. Okay, yeah, like, did you play the or did you play the DLC stuff for, I should say? It's probably more accurate. Uh, no. Okay, uh, one of the DLCs for that game was basically uh, the three, like, the three, three of, like, the main characters in that game, after a certain point, team up, like, team up and go through, like, kind of, like, uh, basically the base game, but you play as, like, all three of them at once, and you can, like, switch between which one you're controlling at that time. Like, uh, you're playing as... One of them, you, you switch so that you can then play as the other, then play as the other, and they all have like a specific move that helps them navigate. I want that like lowest expectation. It's a more fleshed out version of that where you control all three of them at once, mm -hmm. either Sonic Hero style or just like character switching, or like like I don't know, switching styles styles in Yakuza or something. Just compare it to that again. <laughs> I don't know. I suppose we'll wait and see, but you know, finger we'll, we'll wait and see what it's like. With Sega, they might decide to go. Like go big bucks with it because Frontiers did sell very well. Yeah, I definitely think it sells pretty well. <laughs> I think it was like like over. It's, I think it's over three million copies now. If I had to guess. Yeah. So anyway, um, uh, yeah, next. Yeah, other than that, uh, so pretty much uh, we get into the the big voice in the sky ending up being the end, literally. Yep. Yep. El endo. <laughs> and uh, then we get to bullet hell. Yep. Uh, I guess so, like start off with. Yeah, we'll start. We'll start with off the, with Supreme. With Mr. So, Money Gun. Yeah, but you mentioned Mr. Money this. Gun. <laughs> you mentioned this uh, before beforehand, where it's like I had to set the game to hard mode, and yeah, I could see why. So, um, I did a little like looking into more or less like what the game plays without hard mode, and yeah, okay, I can kind of see like the I, I kind of see how the cut is a lot more believable because <laughs> I I I because after playing hard mode, I'm like okay. How the hell do you make a smooth transition from, like, just after the first boss and then go into the end cutscene? And I'm like, okay, I kind of see how that works. But when it comes yeah. to uh, the game, when it comes to the whole thing around Supreme, uh, yeah, definitely it was very an underwhelming boss. Um, it was, in the grand scheme of things, when I was playing it, it was very kind of... I don't know, it was just kind of, like, annoying, because it felt like it was just, like, delaying the inevitable in the grand scheme of things. <laughs> it, it really kind of <laughs> did. Like, it, it felt like, uh, like, Supre like with the final boss, the first round, it basically yeah, just, you like, all right, uh, you, well, you dodged, see? like, uh, you, you were dodging, like, missiles and everything before. Now let's, uh, let's just multiply that. Like, that's just what it felt like. You're the, you're the first one I've seen time over on him. Yeah, um... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You can get around them, at least. But honestly, the issue people have with Supreme is just he's really fucking easy. Yeah, like, uh, I, I this was This kind of goes back into something that I mentioned before. You know how... Uh, do you want to you keep going, or do you want me to go into no, a different no, no, tangent can, can really go. quick? You can go on. Okay, well, it's not a different tangent. It's related, but... Basically, when I mentioned before that the game might, like, showed signs of being rushed... Yeah, like, it's been confirmed by the development team that for the second half specifically, that was when, that's why it feels a bit more slapdash compared to the first, like, compared to everything up to Chaos Island. And I think you can kind of see this with the final boss as well, because it's basically just a bigger Giganto with, like, a gun and a, some more Bully Hill stuff. Yeah. And from what they've said, it was, like, there was intended to be more with him. Like, there's unused animations and, like, different QTEs for him that just... Like, they have data for them, they've got animations for them, but they're obviously, like, incomplete, so... What people are thinking is they may implement some of them back in with, like... A, like, a DLC and that, use it to patch it back in. It's, you know, it'll be free anyway, so they may as well. Maybe. If they've got the time and the budget. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, basically, that's kind of why... <laughs> uh, that's kind of... Yeah, that's kind of why it feels a bit underwhelming, because... It's a bit. It is a bit unfinished, unfortunately. Yeah. Like not unplayable, but just a bit bare bones. Yeah. And then there's also like the second phase on hard mode, which um, 
The end. Yeah. So, okay, so I said it before in Alaska again. How do you feel about Ikaruga? <laughs> I cut, cut and I'm to still the, gonna keep on saying. <laughs> cut to the video of the most like pain in the ass bold hell. If you in, like, cause like okay, so to anyone who doesn't know, there was this <clears throat> there was uh there was this like this really tough as hell bold hell that was revealed at a convention. And apparently the challenge was if you managed to beat it, like, like it was just absolutely like fucking difficult. Like if you move one millimeter the wrong direction, you were, like, you were toast. It basically the whole thing was if you beat it, you get a free 3DS. And it's just like, I've and it's just like I don't know, just like it was, it was actually kind of, it was just kind of funny like seeing the uh, like just the sh the bold hell in this <laughs> and then just making that correlation. But I think, uh, yeah. No, sorry, sorry. I was just sneezing. I was just sneezing there. Like I was holding my sneeze there. Oh, uh, <laughs> if, if you want to keep going. Yeah. Um. So I would say what I think about like you know, as a whole. But here's the thing. I Barry the light was playing so fucking loud. I couldn't hear what they were actually saying. So I have no real opinion. <laughs> it was. It was. You can go back and look. It's just like I decided to play Barry the light. I oh. couldn't. It, yeah, okay, I didn't you hear, couldn't, I didn't hear you the, couldn't hear it. I didn't hear the music in it, because yeah. on the stream, yeah, because the stream, like, the delay was so fucking bad that I couldn't, and, like, I could hear my own voice back at the end, and that was just disorienting me, but oh. still. Uh, like, it's like, okay, you know, the you funny could, thing like, is, like, okay, like the... can, I, can I ask, yeah, can I, can I ask you something? What? That game that you were talking about, where they were showing it off, yeah, were the, do you remember the, at the projectiles in that were purple? I think so. I think, like, I think you guessed the was name. That from that, was that from that one? Was that from that one game that's like the hardest final boss ever and it's just yes. this fool of hell where the yes, entire that's... fucking... Yeah. I know what fucking game you're talking about. Yeah. It's called Mushihime Sama Futari. How the fuck can I say that? That's the real question. <laughs> <laughs> no, the, I know that exact fucking game because yeah. I saw that video itself back in the day and I remember that it existed not too long ago yeah i know like they it's weird it's weird remembering that game exists <laughs> yeah is that, right, actually like, one of them one of the games in that series is on switch it's a good it bullet hill if you want to play it <laughs> uh, it's got infinite life so don't worry about uh not being able to see what the fuck you're doing <laughs> i mean anyway I'm, uh anyway <laughs> Um, but... I mean, the real thing to do there is like, e yeah, edit over like the final boss scene for Ikaruga over the end because <laughs> that's like the most appropriate one. <laughs> uh, it was, um, but yeah, yeah. it's just, uh, I would say <clears throat> that, uh, like, definitely, you know, like, I think this is definitely like a contrast compared to something like the pinball game, where it's like in the pinball game, it just came out of nowhere. This, you had other times where you get to actually play a bullet hell for the sake of the gameplay especially on Orano's Island so I definitely think yeah, like you know you see it only you, you get your final boss only mostly came out of nowhere yeah <laughs> basically uh I think that to be fair like that development thing again mm -hmm. honestly I wonder if that development time thing is why the final boss is as it is because there are files that imply like the ending was meant to be much more extravagant or at least was planned to be than it wound up being like because it, it's, it's kind of like low-key visually in the actual game but there are files that imply it was meant to be like a more traditional final boss like i more could imagine like it would have been fights. like similar to again like song adventure 2 <laughs> since like you know ian flynn is a huge or, Chuck, or even like or shadow the hedgehog yeah or even like something like or even something like chuck like the final boss in asura's wrath which is like flying towards the screen avoiding all kinds of crazy bully hill shit yeah but I could also, th I was about to say, because yeah. I was about to say, is like I could imagine it being like either like Shadow the Hedgehog or Sonic Picture Two, stuff like that. But also like well, just Sonic for Heroes. just for like hard mode specifically, or, uh, they uh, add oh, in sense. the bullet hell that you have to beat. Like, I could imagine that. Yeah. Honestly, like I'm fully of the belief that it is, and as it is, just because they ran out of time and budget, they need to put something in. So they figured. Let's put it in and make it a big Ikaruga tribute and put in these little mini games beforehand so people have some idea what the fuck they're meant to do. Yeah. That is my head canon, until otherwise that is what I'm gonna believe. Yeah. I don't even hate I don't even hate the final boss either. Like it's just it, it's a surprising gameplay shift. Yeah, uh, like normal mode and easy mode, underwhelming. Hard mode is just like, okay, this is a different change of pace. 
yeah, like, it's a, it's a very odd, honestly, the only part that kind of, like, pissed me off with the boss was, at the very end, I kept on fucking up the QTE, and if you fuck it up, you need to replay that entire boss over. Uh... Like, there's no checkpoints in it, and I had to do it, like, three or four times, so I was just kind of pissed off by the end of it. <laughs> I was playing on a capture card, so I had delay. <laughs> yeah, so you you lucky fuck. Yeah, I, I I'm su like I'm surprised half of those times I actually managed to get like especially get, like forget the fucking final boss. Imagine how many times I had to get like later on down the line the fishing quick time events. Just like <laughs> it's like the three ring quick time events. Like, oh god, I I'm I, I'm surprised I was managed to get work it as well as it did with that delay. Uh, we should have got, we should have got big, we should have got big to join us for the final battle. <laughs> that way we could have had a Sonic Heroes reunion, <laughs> the, the world's weirdest heroes reunion. You've got Sonic, you've got big, and you've got a character that didn't exist at the time, uh, in more ways than one. Yeah. Um. Other than uh, that, I would say, I mean, Sage sacrifices herself. And I definitely do think it's a very an emotional moment, and definitely Eggman yeah. going out of his way to uh, integrate her into his system and bring her back to life, and with a line, that's my daughter. Like, I, absolutely. I, it's a really great <laughs> moment. I love it. And yeah. Yeah, honestly, I... Yeah, it's a great moment for Eggman. I, you know what, I, you know what I'm excited for? I, I, I'm really excited to see her, because I, I definitely am going to be putting money on this. I'm excited to see her come back in later games. And I want, and I'm interested to see, yeah. like... Like, her, people love her. She's gonna be back. Yeah, I, I want to see more, like, uh, them, like, go all out with, like, different designs for her. Like, because I, I think her design in Sonic Frontiers is fine, but I'm just, like, with the amount of designs mm -hmm. they've come up with Son for Sonic characters, like, in the future, <laughs> like, like, I think, like, uh, Sonic Riders, for instance, has some pretty great designs. Um, I, no, I, give me, like, give me Sage with her own version of Eggman's jacket. I will take that. <laughs> Oh man! Like, like a black, you... like a black and red or white and blue version of Eggman's jacket. Like you... That would be badass. Have you seen like uh, have you seen like images of like the Genovan anime Eggman? <clears throat> like imagine. Oh no, I know. Oh, I know what you're talking about. That's yeah. That's not <laughs> okay. That's not Genovan Eggman. That's a fan version, a fan idea of what Eggman's daughter would have looked like when Mania came out. I think uh, her name is Omelette. I really want. I really want to hope. Like, that's a fucking canon. great design. Though. I really want to hope like, like it's is... that, but with like Sage's actual like actual hair and whatnot. Like I. That's what people see think. That. Like people are thinking this. People think that Sage actually has a reference to that. In which case, that's you know really cool. Like a really cool callback if that's the case. Also, I haven't. I have yet but, yeah, to see also, it. But also, I, I have to know. say. Yep. I have to say. I have to. I. Uh, I'm very proud of Sage as well. Because she continues her father's well-known tradition of firing giant laser beams at at giant space rocks. <laughs> that, I'm not even just talking about SA2. That is a Eggman family tradition. Yeah. Or Robotnik, sorry. Because Jill Robotnik blew up a fucking a fucking comic with that as well. <laughs> That's you, oh my god! Can you imagine if they got if they got uh like if. Because I have to imagine, like, Snapcube is gonna do a uh, Sonic Frontiers fan dub, right? They have to. Like, I hope Alfred does. I hope Alfred doesn't see the game before that, because his reaction is gonna be fucking hysterical. Oh yeah, I. <laughs> I also. One way or another. Yeah, I can't wait to see his reaction. And cause, whoever cause does. Penny's definitely because Penny streamed it already. Yeah, Penny streamed it already. And. Yeah, she's already seen the game and. Yeah, I just like imagine nice like place. whoever they get for uh, whoever they get for like Sage if they fan dub it just to. See just to say my super laser piss and, just, and just and just Alfred going wait what the fuck that's in here <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome <laughs> that's my girl oh, there goes Hawaii uh, okay, there goes Hawaii I'll be, all I'll over be again funnier if he says something like this this brat here stole my line <laughs> or just Alfred sighing deeply in the background <laughs> <laughs> I can't escape uh, it. I can never escape this fucking thing. And yeah, you go, girl. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, but yeah. so I guess what's what's left then? Uh, I guess the ending credits, like both like both of the ending credits themes. The song from Nate wants to battle. Yeah, actually, I guess all three of them. There's yep. Dear Father, which I don't remember much of. Uh, there's Vandalize, which I think we both established, we both like, yep. and there's the Nate Want to Battle song, One Way Dream. Yeah. 
Uh, which I, I wasn't able uh, to hear live, but you sent me a link and it's actually really good. Yeah, like it's uh, honestly like if I was tearing them, uh, Dear Father's like B tier for me. I'm not really much. I'm not really much of a ballad kind of guy or like a slower song type of guy. Mm -hmm. Vandalize is A tier. One Way Dream is an S tier song for me. That song is fucking great. Yeah, and it's also like a really. It's also in a meta sense really touching because. The guy who come, the guy who helped write it, uh, Tommy Otani, he was like worked with Nate to write it. He said like the lyrics in that are meant to be a message from Sonic Team themselves, oh, like wow, the mentality nice. for this game and like going forward. Okay. In which case, like, awesome, that's fucking beautiful. Yeah. Like and unironically, also, that's a fucking beautiful. I, I could be wrong in this, but Nate Wanna Battle has done like a number of like Sonic covers, right? He's done like two. He's done at least like two albums worth of them. Yeah, wow, like that's in fact like actually like. Okay, they did like, like starting like a few years ago, they did like an Anna, like a symphonic sort of orchestra for like different Sonic music, and for like the vocal, like for the covers of the vocal themes, Nate's actually been the vocalist for a few of those. Oh, uh, I so, just yeah, he's done official work with like Sonic Team and Sega before. I can just imagine his first reaction when he got that job is just like, "Can you give me like three minutes in the bathroom to freak out?" Thanks. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. He just like he gets the call. He gets the call. He puts the phone down. They just hear like distant screaming and yelling in the background. And it comes back all calm. Yeah, I, I think it'd, I'd be interested in that. It's just like that. It's you. just like that fucking Heavenly Father Takahiro moment where he's just like Takahiro's like, oh no, listen, I, I, I'll just like, why don't you just give me a list of recordings and I'll just like do, do it, and then Heavenly Father's just. <laughs> 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 But yeah, um, that's... overall, I do, I, again, I know it brings back to what I've said before, but overall, Sonic Frontiers, just absolutely, I'm just, one thing I can say, just, I'm really glad I got it as a Christmas present. It was a really great game. Yeah, like, I can safely say, I got this, like, just before I got Pokemon Scarlet and Violet as well. Both of those games are games that, like, try to push their series forward in a big way like they're trying this entire new direction for it deep in like conventions and like what works with it but like trying experimenting new things i can say between the two of them sonic is definitely the one that came out liking more helps yeah. that the sky wasn't disappearing every other every other frame in that game but still yeah <laughs> i think um because here's how uh, i see it with like here's but how still, i see like, it in the grand scheme like, of things um when it comes to like scarlet and violet i think that's very much just going okay what else can we do that uh, can improve on, like, the Pokemon, you know, formula and everything? Okay, let's go this route. With Sonic Frontiers, it's very much like, okay, how do we actually... How can we legitimately make a good Sonic game? What are what are some stuff we can experiment with? What are some stuff that could work? What are some stuff that couldn't? And let's just make this game that's just, like, like, this uh, sandbox of things we, like, could work with. Yeah, like, we should... We should... I should, we should probably add like on there. How how can we make a good open, not open world, open zone Sonic game? Yeah, or like more open Sonic game. Like that's actually more. That's the, that's the terminology they use. It's not open oh, world. It's open zone. Open zone, like just like from like how their their design approach. I'm assuming or like yeah. how they think about designing the areas. I just honestly, yeah, like I hope whatever whatever Sonic team does next, because you know, with any luck, with any luck, they're going to build on this what this game did. Take it, build on it, and improve it. Like yeah. with fan feedback and that, because they have said that's that's not a really good thing about Sonic Team. They listen to fan feedback and they use it to like try and improve themselves. Like they've said, like they've that's been a major part of, of you know their entire process and their, their process for like the next the games going forward. I could do so whatever they do, best of luck to them. I hope and I genuinely hope it builds on this because if they do, then we could have something that's like really fucking exceptionally good. I want to repeat yourself. And Sega, for the love of God, just give, and Sega, for the love of God, just give them the time and money to do it. Yeah, but <laughs> that's yeah, like, you might want to repeat that's like yourself because uh, I think but... Discord kind of cut you off a little here, there. Like, it was... Okay, uh, short and sweet recap for it then. Ed, Sonic Team listens to feedback. That's very good. They've said they're listening to feedback with this. So, if they do that, I hope they, and I hope whatever game they make next is really fucking good. Yeah, okay. Sega for the love of and Sega for the love of God, give them the time and money they need. 
Yeah, honestly. If you block if... them again, I'm going to be very upset. Yeah, I'll, honestly. Like... I don't know, I'll throw, I'll throw a Kiryu, I'll throw a Kiryu plush at you. Yeah, honestly, you are giving Atlas all the time in the world for Persona 6. Give Sonic Team the fucking time for another yeah. Sonic game. If we can get Sonic exactly, Frontiers, like... but more perfected and better, I would absolutely buy it. Yeah, like, the Persona team, like, you're giving the Persona team all the time they need. You're giving the Yakuza team until, like, 2024 for their next main game. Mm. Valkyria Chronicles and that is, like, your most, like, highly reviewed franchise. Give Sonic the time he needs, for fuck's sake, Sega. Yeah, seriously. But yeah, otherwise, good job, guys. Yeah. <laughs> Alright, um, so, yeah, I think that's uh. pretty much gonna be it. Uh... Yeah, so I think uh, I think we'll wrap up here. Uh, is there? Do you have like any social media or whatever that you want to plug? And not really. My social medias are just kind of they don't really do much. They just kind of I just kind of use social media as an excuse to, or like as a way to like look at other people's stuff that I'm interested in. Okay. Right. Well, I'm, um, I don't have an like I'm not I'm not an art I'm not an I'm not Vincent Van Gogh. I don't have okay. any art <laughs> that's worth plugging on well, the art that you'd I, want to see anyway. <laughs> I mean, it's like, you don't have to be an artist, because, like, eh, whatever. But it's fine. Like, cause, I, so, yeah, shit. ultimately, just, if you if you liked what you've seen, it's just, ultimately, I want to leave this to you. Like, what do you guys think about Sonic Frontiers? Leave a comment in the below. Like, just, what do you like? What do you not like? Uh, if you are interested, like, definitely feel free to subscribe to my channel. Uh, I stream on Twitch almost every every day of the week. Uh, I, I have a, so I have social media on Instagram, Twitter. I've got a art station for my portfolio. If you want to help support me financially, you can donate to my Ko-Fi because I'm trying to make this a full-time job and I'm failing at it and I need help. Please get, please just give me the damn money. <laughs> give him, give him money, give the boy money. He's good at what he does, I swear. <laughs> I've not put a commission before, but that's because I'm also poor. That's, Do you think yeah. this game? <laughs> <laughs> Do you think this laptop was cheap? <laughs> oh my god! Yeah. Uh, anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Fun time. Fun times. Uh, thanks for being here. Thanks for being here as well, as he said. Uh, yeah, thanks for coming along. And yeah, uh, play, play Sonic. Thanks for uh, just uh, sh thanks for sharing your opinions and whatnot, Obsidian. Nah, it's no bother. Glad glad to be here. Yeah. It's, it's been a fun time. Sorry if I sound like a starry mess and you can't hear half of what I say, but... No, it's fine. You know... You've uh, been coming in pretty clear. Yeah. That's good. Hopefully it comes through clear when this is actually fully uploaded, but... It should. Yeah. Uh, good. Fun times. Good time all around. Yeah, right. Alright, so, uh... Yeah. See you later. See ya.